<laughs> we're going to grab onto our tune-up balls. I know not everybody has them. So what I'm going to do for this section of class is I'm going to talk about some rolling strategies for the glutes using these props. And then after I've explained that, I'll offer some stretches for the glutes and lower legs. Okay. So we'll kind of go in two parts. Thank you for your patience. Go team. <laughs> we'll take the tune-up balls out of the bag if you're using these guys. These are one of my all-time favorite self-massage props. If you're wondering what they are, it's literally just two kind of squishy foamish balls in that come inside a bag, and it's like, it's game-changing. We'll use the two tune-up balls, and we're coming into our glute max. So our glute max is the big bum muscle that's responsible for actions like that chair pose. I'm taking my tune-up balls and placing them kind of at the crest of my bum on each side, and then coming down onto my back. If you don't have the tune-up balls, you'll come down onto your back into the same shape and we'll move into some stretches from this shape. So starting, feet planted on the earth about hip distance apart. Pushing into the feet, lift the bum and tuck the tune-up balls underneath. I want you to notice right away if they feel kind of even or if one feels maybe higher than the other. That's not necessarily a problem. You can always reach down and move them around. But I want you just to sit and breathe here for a moment if you're in the rolling exercise with me. If you don't have the tune-up balls at home, I want you to push into your left foot, lift your right leg, and cross that ankle over your left thigh. So now I'm reaching that knee forward. You have the option, if you're in the stretch, to stay right here. Or you can wiggle your left heel a little closer to your bum and push your right knee forward, so away from your torso, a little more. Yeah. <laughs> if that's feeling okay, you could float the left foot off the earth entirely and start to hug the knee into the chest. Hands can wrap around the back of the thigh or arms can rest by the side, similar to what we did at the start of class. I'm going to get you to hold and breathe in that stretch for a little bit while I come back to our rolling friends. If you're hanging out in the glute rolling exercise, start to shimmy your hips right to left. Just feeling how different parts of the muscle solicit different or elicit different sensations. When I wiggle like this, sometimes the tune-up balls roll away a bit, so you can always reach underneath and adjust them. You can get a little weird with it. You can kind of draw circles with your hips. <laughs> If you are working with that movement, go really slow. Resist the urge to rush. If you're hanging out in this figure four stretch, let's take one more breath here. Big breath in. As you exhale, you might tuck the knee in a little closer to your chest. And then relax your foot down to the ground if you floated it. We'll head into a twist from here. So. Keep your legs in this position, but let everything fall over and to the left. The right foot will tap down. The left thigh will come down to the ground. If this doesn't feel comfortable keeping the legs in the figure four shape, you can unstack that top leg and just put the thighs on top of each other or the right knee on top of the left. In our rolling exercise, if you're working with that left and right, I want you to pause. Adjust the position of the props if you need to and just get a little heavier. Relax your feet, relax your shoulders. You can stay right here, or if you'd like to explore a different movement, we'll find some pelvic tilts. This means moving those hip bones at the front, up and away or closer to your rib cage. So to start, curl those front hip bones away from your rib cage, the low back will arch, you'll roll down on the props. Then exhale, curl the hip bones up towards the rib cage, we roll up on the props. And go through that a few more times, inhaling, curling the hips up and away. Exhaling, curling the hips up towards the rib cage. And move with your breath. If it feels good, you can make the movement bigger. If it sucks, don't do it. Hang out in stillness. Coming back to our stretching folks, we're still in this twist. I want you to take a big breath into the right side of your rib cage. Think about that 100% inhale we started our class with, breathing all the way down to the belly. One more time here. 
and then exhale, pushing the knees back up to center. And we'll switch sides, uncrossing the right leg. Left leg lifts up and crosses right thigh. So my ankle is crossing the thigh, my knee is pressing away from my torso. Option to stay or wiggle your right heel a bit closer to your bum. Option to stay or to tuck the right leg in a little closer. Hang out and breathe. If you're in that glute rolling, let's pause again. Reach down. You can always move the props around if you feel like you've kind of overdone it in one part of the glutes. The upside is it's a really big muscle, so move them around. Remember, my only rule is no tune-up balls in the butt crack, okay? Just dangerous for our spine. Option to stay right here. Or you can start to march your feet out. So floating one foot away from the ground, maybe it's just a centimeter. Maybe you tuck that knee all the way to your chest. Then plant that right foot down and float the left foot. Go slow. Notice the differences side to side. You can march to a consistent pace or you can play with hugging one knee into the chest, holding and breathing. I invite you to make it your own. It's a really intuitive practice. Coming back to our stretching, we'll take one more breath in our figure four shape. Big breath in. Exhale, let your right foot come down to the ground. And nice and slow, we'll move into our twist on the other side. Legs falling over to the right. Remember, you can stay in the figure four shape. This gets into the obliques a little more. It creates a bit more of a stretch in this area, right in the side of the hip. So if that's feeling awesome, stay. But if you prefer, you can uncross the legs and hang out in a more conventional twist. If you're marching those glutes out, or those, sorry, those feet out, and you're having a good time, you can keep working there. Or if you'd like, I'm gonna offer just one more way to play here. We'll push into our feet, lift our hips, and I want you to slide the tune-up balls out to the sides a little bit. So coming more around to the very edge, the left and right edges of your bum. Let your feet come together and find your cobbler's pose. We're moving into more of the glute med and min here. The side glute muscles that sit underneath your glute mats. If that's feeling great, you are welcome to stay right here. If you want to play with a little bit of that contract and relax, so squeezing our muscles into the prop and then relaxing them, you might do what we did earlier. Take a big breath in and exhale. Press both knees down towards the earth. Feel that feedback. And then relax that effort. You can stay right here, or if you want a little bit more intensity in this exercise, think about just kicking your shins out the toes are pointing out to the edges of the mat. I'm in this really wide-legged lying down position. So you can be either in cobblers or sweep those legs forward. You're in like this almost star shape, like you're floating on a nice pool. That would be great right now. <laughs> Coming back to our folks in the twist, let's take one last breath into the left side of your rib cage. Big breath in. And let it go. You can uncross your legs from that twist and then point both knees back up to the sky. Coming back to this position, resting down. And then you can join our folks with the tune-up balls, choosing your own adventure here. Option one, feet together, knees open out to the sides. If this feels like a little bit much on your hips after all the work we've done, you can take your hands into little fists and tuck them underneath the kind of corners of your bum just to give yourself a little support and take some of the strain out of the hips. It's a way to make the pose a bit more gentle. Or option two, you could lengthen the legs all the way long and let the toes fall out to the side. One last big opening pose, arms out to the side, palms up to the sky.
We'll find just a few more rounds of breath in either of these shapes. If you're working with movement and you're rolling, keep going. Both rolling and our yogic stretching, poses, asana shapes, they're really intuitive practices. So if you want to move in a way that's not something that I told you to do, do it. That's the whole point. The point is to build the ability to listen to what our body wants to do and to know that our yoga practice is the space where we can actually act on those requests. There's so many other parts of our day where our body's like, I want to get up. I'm so tired of sitting. I have to pee, but I'm in a meeting and we just like can't do the thing our body wants to do. So this is that self-indulgent space that allows us to give our body's intuition place to play. I shouldn't even use the word self-indulgent. It's more like freeing, playful, joyful, the way life should be all the time, but isn't. <laughs> Let's take one more breath, whatever shape you're in. Let a big sigh out, let something go. <sighs> ah, yeah. <laughs> if you're in cobblers, you can point the knees up to the sky. If your legs are out long, you can start to wiggle them back to center. If you have tuna balls underneath you, pull them away. And let's just notice how the body feels. Are the glutes maybe more in contact with the earth than they were before? Do your feet naturally want to fall out to the side because your hips are really open now? What do you observe? Can we spend just a minute or two here in a little bit of quiet, a little bit of self-observation to close our class? If you have the time and the inclination, you can stay exactly where you are for however long will serve you. And if you're feeling ready, have to transition into whatever comes next, start to introduce some motion in the body. Maybe it's fingers and toes or rolling wrists and ankles. Maybe it's another full body stretch, big breath in, arms reaching back, toes pointing. And exhaling, you might give yourself a little hug, a little gratitude for taking some time out of your day, out of your vacation, out of your work, <laughs> to show up for yourself, to practice that skill of tuning in, of listening, and of play. <laughs> 